have to do with the fact that once we lived in dynamic balance with nature, not as animals do, but as human beings only could, but in a way that we have now lost. Well, what, how have we lost it and what have we lost? How we have lost it is uh, the, the way in which these psychoactive compounds that were being brought into the diet were acting is they were psycholytic upon the formation of the ego. They literally suppressed the formulation of the, e the formation of the ego and promoted instead collectivist, tribal, partnership values which were operating intuitionally in a resonance relationship with the, the feminine vegetable matrix of the planet. In other words, nothing was verbalized, everything was felt, everything was intuited. And regularly at the new and full moon, these small groups of hunter-gatherers, later pastoralists, gathered and uh, took these hallucinogenic plants and d dissolved boundaries and engaged in group sex and annealed, a new word that we've brought in here, annealed the irregularities that had cropped up in people's personal self-imaging in the interval since the last <coughs> session. And this kept everything uh, grounded on the plane of that which is important, i.e. the values of the group, of the species, of dynamic balance with the ecosystem, and so forth and so on. Well, when this was disrupted, and the supplies of these plants were diminished, and new religious forms arose, and the time between the great festivals grew longer and longer, uh, the ego begins to take hold first as a kind of cancerous aberration, but then quickly becoming a new style of behavior, which quickly then eliminates all other styles of behavior by suppressing access to the chaos. And this is the point I want to make, that there is between the ego and, and full understanding of reality a barrier, a problem. The fear of the ego to surrender to the fact of chaos. Chaos is what we have lost touch with. This is why it has been given a bad name, because it is feared by the dominant archetype of our world, which is the ego, which clenches, because its existence is uh, defined in terms of control and the the furious modeling process and this will now sound like a knock on modeling the furious modeling process that the ego endlessly carries out is an effort to fight the absence of closure the ego wants closure it wants a complete explanation the beginning of wisdom i believe is the ability to accept an inherent messiness in your explanation of what's going on. Because nowhere is it writ that human minds should be able to give a full accounting of creation in all dimensions and on all levels. You know, Wittgenstein had this idea that philosophy should be what he called true enough. And, and I think that's a great idea. Let's just make it true enough, because that's as true as it can uh, be gotten. Well, so uh, the imagination is chaos. New forms are fetched out of this chaos. For me, the creative act is the letting down of the net of human imagination into the ocean of chaos on which we are suspended and the attempt to bring out of it ideas, to bring out of it, uh, you know, sometimes, and this is part, this is my model for the psychedelic experience, that it is the night sea journey, that it is the lone fisherman 
on a tropical sea with his nets and you let these nets down and uh, sometimes something tears through them that leaves them in shreds and you just row for shore and put your head under your bed and pray and at other times what slips through are the, the minutiae, the minnows of this ichthyological metaphor of idea chasing and but sometimes you know you actually can bring home something that is food that is food for the human community that we can sustain ourselves on and go forward so we haven't talked that much about art and aesthetics but I think in the human world uh, the the uh, the appetition is for beauty to my mind and this is another place where the Platonism shines radiantly through you know because Plato held that the good was the true and that both were the beautiful and this is a very quaint idea from the point of view of modern philosophy but I think uh, you know you f it's in the bones when you actually connect yourself up uh, to the planet that's why chaos is capable of being the tremendous repository of uh, ordered beauty that it is because there there is no chaos in the old definition that which is to say that which by any definition or any test is found to be disordered that is just a kind of uh, of uh, a, a hell notion a kind of hypostatization of an ultimate state of disorder but nowhere in in the world that is deployed through space and time do you encounter that instead what you encounter is embedded order upon embedded order this fractal uh, this fractal thing and then finally uh, for me the imagination is the goal of history I see culture as an effort to uh, Re literally realize our collective dreams and you know it's on a very crude level when it's you make your mask and I make my mask and then we dance around together and it's even at a very crude level when it's you design your shopping mall and I'll design my World Trade Center and we'll put them on the same piece of real estate but we're coming now into through media I believe through virtual reality and human machine integration and this kind of thing into a, a situation where the imagination is going to be something that we uh, can share that the path of mind through its own meanderings will become something that can be recorded and played back we will have the possibility of living in our own past or uh, you know creating and trading realities as art and art a as life lived in the imagination is the great archetype which rears itself up at the end of history life in the imagination the imagination is this auric field which surrounds the transcendental object at greater and greater depth as you approach the transcendental object and as we now close distance with it all uh, all of uh, our, our cultural expression all of our self-awareness is taking on this curiously designed quality I mean you must have noticed this that the world is very heavily designed in a way that it never was before uh, morphogenetic fields of great size and scope which are international schools of architecture and design touch whole continents entire cities are given certain uh, ambiances this is the summoning of the imagination into the human scale it's like a god that we wish to call down and draw to earth I mean this is why William Blake called it the divine imagination because it is the four-gated city it is the flying saucer we are on a journey to meet uh,
this great attractor and as we close distance with it, it is more and more a multifaceted mirror of our images of beauty. So it's like an ascending learning curve that becomes so asymptotic. And at that point, you're face to face with uh, a mystery, a living mystery that is within each and all of us. It's the imagination that argues for the divine spark uh, in human beings. It's absolutely confounding if you try to uh, get biology to produce it for you as a necessary quantity. It isn't that. It's a, an emanation from above. It is literally a, uh, a descent of the world soul into all of us. We then become the atoms of the world soul and our channel to it is by closing our eyes and obliterating our immediate personalized space-time locus and falling into the imagination which is running like a river through all of us uh, endlessly driven by the you know the hydraulic momentum of the cataracts of chaos which usher into the creativity of the imagination. I mean, these river metaphors are, are just endlessly applicable to this. The flowing of forces over landscapes, the pressure of chaos on the imagination to create creativity, and it's looping back into the same. I mean, these, uh, these things are the icons for the world that uh, wants to be but the key is surrender and dissolution of boundaries, dissolution of the ego, and a trust in uh, the love of the goddess, which transcends rational understanding. There will come a moment which will be an absolute leap into space, and we will simply have to have the faith that there is something waiting there, because the dominator style has uh, left us no choice.